thank you for coming on a Friday evening like this. This is a uh, welcome. This is the sort of a kickoff uh, and parent information meeting for the 2021 summer cyber camps. Uh, this is actually our fifth year of doing uh, summer cyber camps and uh, our second year of dealing with the pandemic and doing our camps, uh, you know, 100% virtually uh, once again. Uh, we had to do it. We were forced to do it uh, with only about a month's notice last uh, year, last summer, uh, when we had to shift from what uh, we had hoped would be our face-to-face -face camps that we had planned and uh, had to make that a quick adjustment, that uh, pivot, that's a popular word, uh, it, to an online version. And we learned a lot. And so welcome, everybody. And uh, do put your name uh, and uh, introduce yourself in the chat. We'd like to uh, collect that information for us. And uh, uh, go ahead and go to the next slide, Urban. So we have a, an agenda uh, prepared for you. Uh, I'm going to first introduce the cyber team and then give a little background and rationale. And then I'm going to turn it over to the experts, our team, to describe the camp and the competitions and the uh, technical aspects that uh, you know your uh, uh, children and, and uh, will be participating in. So first. Top of the list, uh, Irvin Lemos, who's our cybersecurity guru and a professor at uh, Cabrillo College. And Denise Moss, Dr. Moss, is our project director for uh, the program, uh, not just for the summer camps, but for our year round program uh, as well. Uh, Brianne handles our website and uh, technical and registration. Uh, she's really busy uh, right now uh, handling all the registrations. Uh, my name is Richard Grodiget. I'm actually, I work for the uh, 28 Bay Area Community Colleges. I'm a, a regional director uh, for the Bay Region and um, uh, have started the camps here in the, uh, in the Bay Area with a single camp. I, I enlisted Irvin to come up and uh, work that one camp that we had in 2016. And, uh, and uh, Irvin has taken it from there and uh, here we are. Uh, Eric uh, is one of our lead uh, trainers, and he'll be uh, teaching your children over the summer and uh, working with Beverly. Uh, Eric is here today, and I'm sure he'll be chiming in uh, later, too. Next slide. We have a big team. We have a lot of folks involved. Uh, Miguel and, and Andrea are high school teachers. Olivia Harriper is my uh, counterpart and colleague in the Bay Region. Uh, she's handling a lot of our connection with industry. Uh, she was interest, inter, instrumental in getting uh, industry judges at our recent competition uh, that the kids participated in. Uh, Elizabeth, uh, the two Elizabeths are our new uh, trainers. And then we have a whole set of uh, what are, is our secret weapon, I think, uh, are college students who know this stuff uh, certainly better than I do and uh, are going to be able to uh, help out uh, as well. Uh, here's the team. Uh, you can see we've got uh, teams of students, uh, helpers uh, throughout. It's a big team. Uh, next slide, please. The background uh, and rationale uh, and why uh, we are putting money, uh, why the colleges are putting money and all the colleges that you see listed here and the partner institutions are investing time in your children to begin the process of developing what is an extreme need for cybersecurity uh, individuals. You wanna put the next slide up there for me? And here's why. Uh, this is actually last year's uh, data, uh, but uh, uh, it's pretty chilling. Uh, every 19 minutes, uh, that's how long it takes the Russians to hack into a network, uh, like the pipeline most recently. Uh, look at this uh, information. But the most interesting one for you and for, you know, maybe for your children who are participating in this, not right away, but at some point, is the job potential. Uh, this is last year's 3.5 million unfilled jobs. It's over 4 million by 2022. Next slide. 
And there's opportunities even here locally. Uh, this is a great website. You can go check it out. It's updated all the time with job openings in cybersecurity. You can see uh, there are thousands of opportunities, cybersecurity openings right here in the Bay Area. Uh, very low uh, workforce supply uh, demand ratio. There's many more jobs than we have people uh, able to fill those jobs. Again, we're hoping your students will do these three weeks of camps, put in 30 hours a week. That's 90 hours on their way to their 10,000 hours that they need to become you know, professionals uh, in cybersecurity. And if nothing else, uh, those 90 hours will make them you know, better technology users, uh, better computer users, safer computer users. And they'll probably be able to help you as parents too, to make sure you're safe in what you're doing uh, on tech, with technology as well. Next slide. Um, well, um, I, this is a slide that surprises me, but uh, it's like so many out there, uh, the Chinese are targeting COVID research organizations. Oh my goodness, you know, we, we know that there's a war going on and it's a cyber warfare and it's our top priority. Uh, so next slide. So here we are at our 2021 summer cyber camps. Uh, my hope is uh, that uh, we'll be able to return back uh, to uh, campuses uh, next summer. That's, that's our goal. Uh, we know that uh, your uh, students who are participating in the camp now, if they're uh, of age to do the camp, which is I think 13, at, at least 13 years old for the summer camps, they can now get vaccinated too. So that might help us uh, speed up the process of getting everybody back on camp. But we've got a tremendous opportunity plan for this summer. We spent a whole year uh, figuring out what happened last summer and uh, how we can improve that. And Irvin and his team and uh, Eric and the teachers uh, and the college students have done a great job putting this together. Uh, next slide, please. And I think I'm going to turn it over to, or should I? Should I? Yes. Irvin, you're on, young man. Yeah. Thank you, Richard. Uh, I do want to point out that the summer camp is part of our year long program. Our program does not reside only in the summer. The summer is really used as a way of showing the students the possibilities into the realm of cybersecurity by showing them various topics throughout the three weeks. We do, we do not go in depth because we don't have the time really to go in depth into all the subjects that we're gonna cover. And there's a whole lot that we could dig into into all the subjects we cover in the camps, but it's really meant to introduce the students into the world of cybersecurity hopefully get them hooked at the very least, get them to be safer than when they started with us. And at the very best, get them on their way towards a, an education and into the industry uh, of cybersecurity. So our site is baycyber.net. There for the summer camps, we have all these dates when these summer camps will happen. As you see, we have high school camps and community college camps this year. The topics that we're going to cover are these. So if you have enrolled your, your child or children into the introductory camp, these are the things we're going to cover. Cyber ethics, their digital footprint on the internet, uh, basic networking of how devices talk to one another, they'll learn some basic programming concepts, and they'll learn Linux. In intermediate camp, they'll continue the, the topics from the first week in the introductory to do things like Wireshark to further their programming concepts uh, Python with the focus of cybersecurity. They'll learn about cryptography and they'll learn digital forensics. In advanced camp, again, adding on from all the other weeks, we'll cover web basics of how the internet works, how, does, uh, how do uh, things like web pages function, and then they learn about web applications and how vulnerable they are and how to secure them. They'll learn some basic reverse engineering tying uh, everything else from Python and programming concepts together. And they'll also learn some basic window security and hardening uh, for you know, their, like their home computers, for example. 
here is an example uh, layout of the agenda during the camp. We're running 50 minute hours. So what our plan is at the at minute 50 of every hour, the students would take a break, like a bio break and a some form of physical exercise with our TAs. Uh, broken it down through every hour. So as we cover various topics, we're going to take a 10 minute break. Uh, lunch, we're scheduling to be 45 minutes. And then we'll have another icebreaker activity and then another 50 minute hours uh, till the end. Our camps do run nine to three, Monday through Friday. And it the both you know, the morning and the afternoon, they are tied together. So uh, if if a, a student is thinking about just doing the morning and skipping the afternoon, they're going to miss uh, a chunk of the, the lecture and the labs. Uh, last year, we had it of just lecture in the morning and activities in the afternoon. This year, it's going to continue. So uh, when we start a topic in the morning, it continues throughout the whole day. So students should expect to be with us from 9 to 3 every day, Monday through Friday. Again, the summer camp is an introduction into the world of cybersecurity. What, we're, what our program really does throughout the academic year is prepare students for cybersecurity through contests. Not only do we help schools provide all the materials and resources and training necessary, but we also help them compete in various contests. Uh, something that we always like to reach out is to uh, the local teachers. Uh, we were looking, we're always looking for uh, more teachers to be coaches. They don't have to be subject matter experts. They just need to be interested and get a group of interested students together, form teams, and join us. Here are just a, a small sample of the many competitions that we participate in and that we assist students on. Uh, there is a link that will be added in the chat for this video of one of our contests. So not only do we introduce students into the world of cybersecurity, not only do we train them and help them in playing various cybersecurity games, we also create our own cybersecurity contest for our region. So students get that hands-on uh, the, the hands experience of what it's like to work in cybersecurity in various uh, scenarios. So, uh, we've done things from a small business consultation to bug bounties to uh, a, a uh, whole infrastructure in the cloud. Uh, we've, we do all kinds of things that show students what, what it's going to be like working in this field. And we also have industry come in to advise us and also be judges. So the students get that, that experience of working with people who could be their employer, who could be their peer later down the line. So going back to CyberCamp, uh, there is a, a small technical checklist, but nonetheless, we want to make sure that, that uh, your students are ready for our camp. So all campers will need a computer or a laptop of any kind, as long as it has stable internet, and has uh, an up-to-date Chrome or any Chrome-based. So like Chromium or Brave, th those tend to work just fine. But uh, we recommend Chrome and, and uh, to be fully updated. Uh, we're going to be using Zoom. As we are using Zoom here, we're going to be using Zoom to deliver the content. We're going to be using Canvas. This is a learning management system that is used by the community colleges. That is where the content will be. So students are able to read uh, after the fact or be able to see what, what's happening uh, through Canvas. We're also going to utilize Discord. Discord is going to be the primary way that we're going to communicate to students throughout the camp and afterwards, especially in our year long program. Uh, our Discord server is continuously monitored by teachers, administrators, students, parents. You are more than welcome to join. It is a community and we treat it as a family friendly community. Uh, we, uh, we strictly enforce the family friendly. 
Uh, so Discord, the link should be showing up in the chat. Uh, ideally, you want to download the application. It is free. You'll need to create an account, and then you'll need to join our server. Like I said, this link should be showing up in the chat. You can join it. Uh, there is a little, uh, uh, I believe it takes about five minutes to verify the account, and then you're able to access the community. So if you make an account and you join our server and you don't see nothing yet, just please be patient. It takes a little bit, and then you're able to see the community. If you have any troubles, feel free to reach out to me or any of the admins. That's actually it. We've we reduced the number of sites that students need to log into this year. Uh, we've we've been able to uh, fine tune what we'll be what we'll be doing uh, this year. So the requirements for students it has really gone down. Any questions for us? Yes. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. So is there a YouTube channel or some sort of exterior content that my son could get an understanding of what cybersecurity as a job is to get him appreciation of, you know, the role of a job in within a larger organization? A CyberSeek could be a place to start. CyberSeek.org, Cyber I believe. Cyber so that has uh, content on it for it, this it, type of... Right, it shows the various jobs in cybersecurity and you can you can switch it by metro area or state. You can, uh, it also shows you like a, a learning path. Could you repeat the name again so I can write it down please? A CyberSeek. CyberSeek. Oh, one word? Yes. Cyberseek.org, I believe, is the address. The competitions that you showed um, during your presentation, those are competitions that run during the classes, correct? Right, the, those run during the academic year. No, no, um, you have academic year, you have you have in the summer, you know, a beginner, intermediate, and advanced class. So those, those, those competitions are not running during those classes. Uh, no, they're not. There, uh, these, uh, what well, we have some small competitions in relatively small competitions, kind of uh, practice competitions, uh, in the intermediate and advanced camps. But the competitions that Urban was talking about. Uh, happen throughout the rest of the school year. And uh, ah. yeah. yes. Yeah, we want this to be a year long activity for students, extracurricular, like, uh, you know, many students play sports throughout the year. And if they really want to excel in a sport, they usually go to summer camp and they do, you know, spring and fall, you know, seasons and they compete in many different competitions. and. That's our plan. We want to give the students as much, you know, as much practice working in cybersecurity and learning. And we found that the best way for them to learn is to do uh, these things and to compete uh, in particular. You would be amazed at some of the resulting uh, students who've come out of the program. And, you know, this is our sixth year and we have students who are are working in the field, internships, presenting, and, uh, uh, you know, they just, uh, you know, if they put in four or five years in high school uh, working uh, and doing the competitions year round, they're going to be, uh, you know, they're going to be somebody who can be reckoned with, that's for sure. Okay. The, my son is in the, his final year. Um, how much uh, time do you need to spend on attending these classes? Is it uh, full time or is it part time? Is it online using uh, content that's already prepared? So our uh, during the academic year, uh, a lot of schools vary how they they participate in our program. Most start as an after school or a lunch club. 
And again, we provide all the resources, the training and support to any school who wants to participate with us. Yeah, so Mark, that, if your question was about the camps, they're all day, right? They're right. Our, yeah. our summer camps run all day, nine to three. Yeah, just nine to three. This the six hours. Uh, they have an hour, they have a break for lunch, though, right? So there's five yes. maybe five hours of participation, and that, right. uh, and that's a mixture of uh, listening and seeing and learning and doing also. So uh, during the course of the yeah. day. Yeah, can I join? <laughs> yeah. Well, there is a a community college division. I yeah, I'm teaching it. We have three levels of uh, uh, of camps that we have an intro. They're each uh, they're basically each five days long, Monday through Friday. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, so you intro. Can enroll in your local community college. Take any class. Take anything that that would uh, uh, qualify you as a student. I didn't. I forgot completely about that. Sorry, Mark. But yeah, yeah, you yeah, 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 yeah. Sorry, I'm taking over the presentation because nobody else is asking questions. But I did some language classes at the end, so that would mean that I am a student within. Uh, are you an? Are you have to be currently a student, Mark? There ah, you. okay. Yeah. yeah. That's why. That's why Richard is saying <laughs> just take any class, a, you know, a single class in just, at your yeah. local college, and that would. You know, by being a, a community college student, you can you can join our community college camp. Yeah, just anything, half unit, remedial, breathing, whatever. You know, as long as yeah. you're a student, yeah. And uh, piano, guitar, anything. Yeah, yeah. Are the still positions still open for the summer camp? For the college I mean, my ones. Son is so yeah, but my son is already signed up, but I'm just wondering if, if it's closed for this year because you hit the head count. Uh, so we have hit our head count, but our registration really, it's a revolving door, especially in these last uh, few weeks uh, leading up to the camps because, you know, summer plans are starting to get solidified people i'm getting half a dozen emails a day of people saying oh my kid got a summer job which you know last year wasn't going to be an issue because nobody was open for summer um, yeah. but yeah it, it's we have our waiting lists open so please uh if you are interested jump on the waiting list and i'm going to work as hard as i can getting everybody that really wants to get into the camps into these camps yeah. yeah, we found that uh, when things are free, they're often, you know, yeah. disregarded sometimes too, uh, when the time comes, you know, when they sign up in March or April and June rolls around and things change. So. Understood. Yeah. Thank you. That's Thank human. you for your questions. That's human nature, right? But, um, yeah. Yeah. So um, just thinking, thinking out loud, um, I'm similar to other competitions which are related to rope controlling a robot through Python and you those classes, those or um, not classes, um those societies get um a targeted activity to complete with their robot. It's that it's a similar sort of structure. The the to, the Yeah, to a degree. Uh you're solving you're solving right. a uh, you're uh, solving a case or a, a puzzle, you might say. Yeah, so I, I guess it, the equivalent would be our regional competitions, the two big contests that we do in the in the winter and the spring, where we we're training students up to those events. Ah, okay, okay. Yeah, we're very partial to cybersecurity too. We think that's what we really need: our skills in cybersecurity that are our society our lives are depending upon it and uh robots are important too i like robots but i i like I, hacking robots. i think we are i think we're the best game in town for the summer camps yeah with the with the gas shortage being shut down because of there you go every day yeah. there's something exactly. yeah yeah 100 exactly. um are there are there other questions in the chat or yeah, there's a one from Sarah about intermediate camp. Do you need a computer to run a VM? No, 
You do not. A Chromebook will work just fine because we're doing everything in the browser. Well, they're doing everything in the cloud, really. And so if uh, that's another pretty hot topic is cloud computing. So their students will be doing cloud computing and working in the cloud all summer long as well. We will be. Um, so your the participants will be running virtual machines, but you'll be looking at the virtual machine through a browser window and it'll be remote out on a server out on the Internet. Right. So, so locally, locally, the student does not need to have a computer that can run uh, virtual machines. Oh, hi, Lisa. You can send me an email. Let me put my email. It's on the actually on the screen, and I will uh, help you with that. Or Denise too. I'm happy to help talk to you how you can bring the club to your school. Yeah. Um, can I jump back really quick to Sarah's questions for the intermediate camp about the computer? Uh, uh, just not um, a tablet. Can't go on a yeah, uh, you know, iPad or or anything like that. The the uh, uh, programs that we're running will just not translate well there. And yeah, yeah, unfortunately, thank you. Thank you, you know, yeah, mobile devices are uh, just have a few too many limitations. So it should be at least a Chromebook, let's say, uh, something with a mouse and a keyboard, and you know, and so yeah. on. Thank you. Sure. What else? So most students have a Chromebook from their high school or or middle school. That is that is common, yes. Um, and yeah. the content is approved for them to use that those laptops. Oh, yes, you know, they they would be allowed to download and and use those equipment, right? Yeah, luckily they will they won't have much of anything to download. This is the nice thing about it. They're going to be opening uh, opening websites through their browser, and that's all. So there's actually nothing to install really on whatever mm -hmm. computer you're using you're just you're just opening websites through the browser of whatever computer yeah. you've got yeah some of some of the school uh, the district supplied computers are kind of locked down for certain things though too aren't they uh, urban and that that can pose a problem uh, the site well anything that could be the we have workarounds for that okay yeah <laughs> if you can get your student on a PC or a Mac or something at home. I think we have the Chromebooks, Chromebooks will work and we have workarounds. If a student, if that's all a student has, a school issued Chromebook, they are able to participate in the camp. We yeah, and we have workarounds for, for example, if the if the school limits YouTube in some way. And we just we provide alternatives to our uh, training videos yeah. that are not YouTube. Yeah. So where students are, students are fine if they, if all they have is a school issued Chromebook. Uh, Lucy's got in the chat, if there are other than the summer camps, other projects or things going on, it's a year long activities really. And I put the website, I think maybe that's probably the best place to go to, to keep up yes. to date on what's yeah. happening. Well, that, that and our discord server. A Discord server is the most active place where we're at. Yeah, I've got to get on there. <laughs> yes, anybody who's interested who wants to join us, I would say the, the number one place would be our Discord community. BayCyber.net is a good place to start for just the general information about what kind of competitions and the kind of things that we do. And then when you want that very specific question answered, jump on Discord. Mm -hmm. You could email me for some of the things. <laughs> I'm more of a traditionalist, so, or old, okay. I think. Email some of us, Discord others of us. <laughs> so, so if I sign up for a language class and then enroll in the cybersecurity program, how long does it take you to become competent within, within cybersecurity realm? Yeah, it we're we're giving the we're giving the participants a ta a little taste of most of the foundational uh, topics that you would need to uh, you know be, uh, obtain expertise at to become a cybersecurity professional. To get really good it takes some years of study and practice. Because right, our, our program is a lot of introducing the students into the realm 
showing them what they can do, giving them the resources, uh, the basic training, really, really to help them take the next step by like going to a community college and taking the cybersecurity courses there. You may uh, have our, our program is really one big on ramp to the community college classes where we where we teach. Like for example, I teach at Cabrillo. I teach the cybersecurity classes there. So this program is geared to help students get to that point where they can take those classes or take classes at Ohlone or uh, City College San Francisco and you know and our other colleges who teach cybersecurity. Richard yeah. alluded Richard alluded to a uh, a kind of a general principle of getting expertise in anything which is about 10,000 hours of practice. So yeah, we're, we're no, helping no. right we're helping get to uh, give those students part of that that hours. Yeah, if they're going to wait until they go to college to begin their first hour, uh, they're going to be way behind. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, the, the camps are there to help introduce them. The year-long program helps them practice those skills that they were introduced uh, mm -hmm. to. I can tell you all the students who have competed and been successful, and um, shout out to Santa Teresa High School in San Jose, who won the championship for the high school competition last month. Uh, and, uh, you know, they all went to camp. So they were all at the summer camps to start with. That's where they met, you know, their students uh, like themselves who were interested and teamed together. And, um, you know, all the competitions, they work as a team. And uh, it's, uh, it's, a, it's a team effort. Cybersecurity is one of those uh, types of uh, professions where you, you are part of a team. Did that answer your question, Mark? Yeah, it sounds excellent. Um, Mark's going to sign up. He's going to take it. <laughs> awesome. So, yeah, it, it sounds really, yeah, it's very pertinent for this, where we are in, in um, yeah. IT, an explosion within IT. Boy, ain't that the truth, especially, mm -hmm. especially the news the past few weeks. Oh, my God. Yeah. So um, are there any All other right. questions? Are we good? Let everyone speak at once now. Right. Well, if you do, if you do come up with questions, please feel free to reach out to us. We are always available to help uh, any anyone with any questions. Um, otherwise, we'll see you or, or your children at at camp. <laughs>